<clears throat> I uh, try to choose a proper title for this presentation. So, well, at the end is going to be or tries to be a grammar treatment for the point clouds. And well, this is for this uh, point cloud workshop. So, well, I'm, I'm currently a PhD student at the, well, the research center in geospatial information sciences in Mexico. Uh, let me start uh, with the contents of this uh, presentation. Well, we I will start with some personal and um, academic introduction. I will try to present this methodology, which I'm trying to uh, follow. And uh, then I will discuss a little bit on the pre-processing. Talk a little bit on the classification techniques I'm using. Uh, segmentation and well, uh, what is the at least my objective is try to get some modeling of buildings and try to discuss what is still missing, what I have to do, what I have to do. So let me start. Well, just if somebody doesn't know me, well, then I'm, my name is Josephat Guerrero. I'm a BSc in computer science. I, I started with some web map service caching. So, well, that's something really far from this 3D, 3D GIS world. But then later on, I continued with the, some Geomatics master. So, well, I work a lot in 3D GIS in underground infrastructure and modeling, which I like a lot. So, well, finally, I'm trying to finish this PhD. Uh, well, I'm assuming that I can say something about the spatial grammars for uh, point cloud processing. So, well, my interest, of course, I like to integrate systems. I like to integrate them a lot using web platform, something that I call prototyping. So, also, I like these systems to be performant. So, well, I like performance. So, what else? Well. Uh, I'm also trying a lot to work with databases. So this integration between databases and web systems is uh, is not easy, but it's nice to to have. Of course, uh, because we're working with 3D data and 3D data somehow uh, there are some tools, but there are a lack of tools too. So I like to develop some things. But of course, uh, because we want to operate with 3D data and we, if we don't have tools, but we are going to work with the web, we need to create some kind of web services. So, okay, let me uh, introduce uh, this work on this presentation. So, uh, uh, at least what I consider is that the point clouds are a really promising data source for modeling 3D objects because they already have the measurements of uh, well, at least uh, the outer shell of the objects. But uh, what I like about this uh, modeling process is that I would like to get uh, structured data from struct unstructured data. But of course, trying to go from unstructured to structured is quite a problem because, uh, well, of course, it's challenging. It requires a lot of disciplines. Uh, so far, there's no standard processing. Uh, there are some, but it's not really like standard. And of course, uh, buildings, which is uh, something I like to model. Uh, I consider also as a set of structured elements. Uh, but there are many problems too, including the uh, kind of point cloud uh, acquisition techniques their density, occlusion, noise. So, well, um, I will not discuss all these issues, but we have to deal with all these issues. So, I hope we can talk a little bit. But okay, uh, what I like uh, about this, well, uh, what I do or what I focus on is buildings. So, at least from my point of view, uh, under my consideration, oh. is that the building is made of flat segments. And in the case of these uh, scannings or laser scannings or photogrammetric point clouds, most of the time, what you what you can get is the outer shell. And also, I consider that the the buildings are made of basic structures, which are roofs and walls. But of course, these 
at least these two kind of uh, objects or surfaces uh, come in various con configurations. So that's one of the key things. Uh, there are that config kind of configurations are not standard. They are not static. But OK, uh, something that I'd like to rescue on these configurations is that uh, these surfaces have some functional, some special relationships. That means it's not randomly placed. So, OK, uh, some key modeling concepts. Uh, surfaces, even if I like them to be flat, they are not flat. So, well, just this image, which is not uh, easy to see because we are having this set of uh, points in space and that 2D projection. Well, I tried to align uh, a plane, trying to look and the align to the to the supposed plane, but it's, it's impossible because you have noise. You have uh, actually the buildings themselves are never flat. Uh, if you also want to uh, find if they are squared, it's really hard to find if they are squared. Uh, but OK, uh, something that happens with these uh, flat surfaces is that the, somehow they can be represented with some dominant orientation or well, if you want to be more mathematical with some uh, dominant uh, normal angle. So vector, sorry. So well, of course, in order for us to say that one surface or one segment of a point cloud is, is, a, is, is a plane, you have to have certain tolerance. So those are the key concepts which I, I will continue to use along this work. But OK, what I'm doing uh, is, of course, I have to pick a, a photogrammetric point cloud, which in this case uh, I'm considering aerial point clouds. Uh, because these kind of uh, point clouds are really, really, really heavy. I try to subsample them. At least I stay at five centimeter. And I, for example, I use random Poisson sampling, which kind of gives a uniform. Well, not uniform, but it, it, it doesn't look artificial in, in, the, in the sense that the, the points are um, are nicely sampled. But okay, uh, once you reduce the number of points, uh, you well, I, I compute something that is called this convergence features and some other descriptors. Later on, I perform some semi-automatic classification. And what it means is that you uh, have to pick a set of samples from the point cloud, which is tricky too. And then I have to assign for the complete point cloud the set of uh, a set of classes. In this case, uh, well, I uh, the short is H, uh, V, and Y. Uh, that means horizontal, uh, vertical, and and client. So later on, for these uh, three classes, I have to extract segments based on connectivity. And of course, I also consider uh, if they're connected, uh, what is the normal normal vector or orientation in case, and that we'll end up with some something that I mentioned as sort of called as planar patches, which in my case, because I, I mentioned this grammar uh, term, this, this is what is be the, the vocabulary. But uh, in order for me to say something about these objects, because I say that they have some uh, special or functional relationships, of course, I have to compute certain attributes. Some of those attributes are unary. That means they, they only apply to themselves. Uh, just to mention a few, for example, the, if you consider the size or the area, if possible, uh, well, the volume in this case, uh, this is something that you can say about a single uh, segment. And also this, this kind of information or unary operators uh, is, is useful to filter or out or sort segments. Then, of course, uh, this is the unary operators, but there are some other operators which uh, uh, apply to more than one uh, segment. So uh, in, in the case that you have two different uh, segments in relationship, then you can try to state the, the set of rules. But uh, of course, after all this filtering and 
relations between objects or uh, patches, you have to check how good or bad they they are. But okay. And at the end, I need to have some kind of metrics to say how how well is this um, modeling process. But okay, this is the so far the methodology. But I will talk a little bit of the pre processing. I I told I was subsampling this uh, point cloud using this random Poisson sampling. So of course I want to reduce the processing times and storage. Uh, why I choose this five centimeters? Because somehow, yes, it allows you to stay within these uh, cadastral requirements. Of course, every country and every cadastral office has their own specific uh, uh, characteristics or requirements, but OK, I assume at least that this could work. Then uh, for this uh, point cloud, I extract these covariance features and a set of other descriptors, which in this case I use some around 50 neighbors. So, uh, so far I consider as the most important these four, which are the planarity, uh, verticality. Well, uh, scattering and linearity, I they're also here. They're not the most relevant, but I will talk a little bit about them. So this is what happens, for example, uh, when you use this uh, uh, descriptor, which is the planarity. Uh, uh, well, if you wonder how I compute this, I use uh, PDAL. So what it means is that if the value of this uh, descriptor is around, well, less than one or around uh, 1.0, that means that that set of points is mostly within a plane. And if you uh, get close to zero, that means that, of course, you're not within a plane. So, well, at least for the image, you can see that uh, in the case of the, the roofs, uh, it doesn't matter of their angle, they're kind of uh, flat. But of course, they're not perfect. So, uh, the another uh, feature, which is quite important, at least for these kind of uh, objects, man-made objects, is the verticality which is, uh, again, is computed in PIDAL. Uh, and this verticality, well, uh, I tried to put the values, uh, the meaning of the values here. For example, uh, what within this, this literature, what this article, what they say is uh, a vertical surface is, uh, well, in this case, around 0 0.7. And in this case, is uh, represented around the yellow value which means it's a vertical surface or at least a vertical set of points. If you go like uh, around 1.0, that means it's mostly like a vertical line, which I, I adjust for us to make an example, to make it clear, is the, this can be the, for example, a pole. And actually we can see, well, if you get close to the screen, you can see that some vertical elements like poles, they're, they're small, but they're kind of red. Not completely, but they are red. And uh, for example, in this case, if in the case of uh, roofs, which are not horizontal, they get green, which is around 0 0.5. And the rest, uh, if it's not vertical, is horizontal, is blue. So then this is something quite useful, at least to, to classify your well, Pre-classifier segment is point cloud. So, what happens with these uh, covariance features? Uh, they capture high-level regular simple structures. Uh, they're based on local descriptors, which are lambda one through lambda three, which are based on the eigen values. And of course, the verticality, which is quite important, is uh, useful or critical to discriminate between roads and facades. Well, that's what the author says. And what happens with this vertical component is that it's uh, actually is the sum of the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And for that sum, you get the you extract the vertical component. Then, if you like to see how it works, well, the the linearity as uh, lambda one minus lambda two under uh, lambda one. 
Um, that means uh, lambda one, which is the highest uh, or the most, um, okay, the highest vector, and the value, uh, sorry, highest value. Uh, what it means is closer to one if the second uh, eigenvalue is really not significant. So that means if you subtract almost nothing, then of course it's close to one. So that means it's linear. And for the planner, uh, what it means is, uh, well, again, this is uh, divided by the largest uh, eigenvalue. So uh, somehow this number is not that uh, not that big or that that affected. But something that is also nice is the scattering, which uh, what it means is that the, if you divide the smallest eigenvalue by the largest eigenvalue, if they're um, what do you say, if they're scattered, if they're around the this sphere, then it's not uh, these vectors are or values are almost the same. But okay, this is just for the, the lambda values. Okay, what happens with these uh, eigenvalues is that uh, I perform some semi-automatic classification. So I extract some samples from the point class, and then I tell this, uh, I use a system to use the samples to classify into these three classes, which are horizontal, vertical, and, and client. So what it, what it means is that you get it with a set of 3D points, which are tagged. Uh, in this case, the Euclidean distance is, uh, is made, is computed, and I consider this, well, the four eigenvalues. So let me, I have a, well, I have this uh, example. For example, this is it's the same point cloud. And uh, I, I, what I do is I draw these polygons um, of course, these polygons are placed um, over the surface, which I want to sample. Uh, in this case, this is an, an inclined surface. Uh, I have also a horizontal surface, and this wall is a vertical surface. So, well, in case you're wondering, this is again in the web because I, I reuse this pottery interface. So, well, uh, this is what I do. I store this in the in a database so I can reuse them later. And uh, after some computation or some time, you uh, you get with you end up with something like this, which is um, the horizontal planes, uh, vertical planes, well vertical points, and um, and client planes uh, points. So I put here this um, histogram. Uh, in this case, this is uh, one, two, and three values, which are the numbers I used to encode. That's nothing relevant about them. Uh, and just in case you wonder why do I why do I have this black um, surface here? Well, it's because the normal is flipped. If I remove the normals, then well. Visualization with normals, these will become blue. So after these, I, I have to extract the segments based on the connectivity, uh, also including the the normals or the orientation, and well, I, I get I end up with some planar patches. In this case, this is also a, a region growing algorithm. So I start with a, with a point I find within the neighborhood, which components have the same class. So if you have the same class and uh, more or less the same normal vector, they they become the same segment. So what I end up with is a set of horizontal segments, vertical segments and inclined segments, which must share the same normal. But of course, uh, I had some issues with the vertical segment because uh, I have a lot of noise and a lot of errors with the normals. Uh, I have some images here. For example, yes, this is something I, I started with. Um, I have really some, uh, in this case, well, this yellow uh, surface is the same as this yellow and, and all the other yellows. 
somehow if you don't consider the normals or the orientations, you end up with a lot of connected uh, segments. So you have to split them later. So I put this uh, orientation for these uh, planes. So you can see, for example, this this roof is, uh, I think it's a saddle roof. Uh, you have at least three, three segments, three orientations, so they have to be split. Uh, there are some issues with the horizontal segments because normals are kind of uh, random. But okay, in this case, I only consider to resplit these three vertical and unclined surfaces. So at the end, you get something like this. So uh, roofs are made of at least in this case three segments and horizontals are made like this. And uh, this is nice because uh, the tolerance I'm using, uh, at least for the for the set of points within a segment, is based on, is based on the some kind of dominant uh, orientation vector. So once I put things back to the well to these uh, points. Uh, this is what happened. I sample all these uh, surfaces, and this is what I end up with. So I have a set of points which can be extracted and operated with based on this uh, connectedness and normal orientation and computing. So, uh, Joseph, yes. Uh, uh, what? What kind of points are these? Uh, I miss something. The okay. triangles. Oh yes, maybe it's easy if I switch to the to the browser. Mm. So let me start again with. Oops. Okay. This is what I started with. So uh, the triangles you see here are some draws, some polygons I draw on top of the, the point cloud. So well, just forget about this. Let's start these ones. I will try to draw something new just for for the sake of demonstration. So I use uh, area. Uh, yes, like this. Maybe I will draw here. Oops. I hope it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not working here, but oops, you have to wait. Okay, well, it's not. Oh, yes, it's working. What I do is, it's not, it's failing on me. Well, something like this. I draw this kind of uh, triangles, which the samples are taken from the point cloud. So, well, if you align yourself, yeah, you can see that they are actually they are actually based on the actual points. It's some kind of point picking uh, uh, function. So. Okay, where well, you click and uh, actually what is happening, the software is um, selecting the closest point from the point cloud. Yeah, what happens is, yes, this is a triangle, uh, mm -hmm. which I assume is uh, on one surface. So what I do is, uh, because I have these uh, never perfect uh, surfaces, I, I extrude around the buffer, I mean, you can say maybe like uh, 20 centimeters, it depends on the on your data. So I extrude this and compute which points are within this extrusion. It's also positive and negative around this surface. So that set of points become your sample. And that sample you tag as a either horizontal, vertical, or something else. Well, I, I have this here. I mean, it's not, uh, I'm not going to store it, but I have, uh, I select horizontal, inclined, vertical, or something else, because I, I try a lot of things here. And finally, I can store it, so uh, that gets into the database. 
But so, why do you need this, uh, these triangles? Is this to be able to represent the plane or what? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I have to start with a plane and I like that plane to be a, um, positioned onto the actual point cloud. So yes, so that that will become the the reference surface. So for that you extrude in the positive direction, uh, on the normal direction, and you also extrude on the negative normal direction. So you end up with the volume. And within that volume, you take all the points. Uh, and that okay. set of points become the, the sample for that class. But OK, that's not just an example. So at the end, once you segment, once you once you do all the things, you end up with something like this. Actually, this is the individual segments loaded. I have this like this. Maybe, maybe see if I try to turn them up one by one. Well, there are a lot of surfaces. I take the largest ones. But OK, this is what I can do. Once you have uh, to each segment, you have assigned an ID so that you can individually load them into this. To this system because well, you need to further operate on those. But OK. This is what I. No, what I actually, I'm I'm um, I'm a little bit uh, surprised. You get a very good segmentation of um, the walls, and actually, you have quite a lot of noise. Yes, that's something that is really at this stage so, is not that uh, good. What? Yeah. But in a way, you still manage to get the segment quite yes. well. It's almost yes. the whole uh, facade. Yes. Well, if you well, you have to uh, always consider that this uh, this kind of point clouds and this kind of models is not noise. Actually, it's, it's this vegetation which is always there. Uh, I have some flowers somewhere there. So yes, it's almost impossible to get rid of them without knowing what they are. So yes, actually the segmentation, I like it a lot. But of course you have issues. If you have this occlusion, you will never manage to, yeah, sure. to yeah. get things out of there. But, but it's quite nice, I mean, uh, for what I did what I use, which is really simple. It, it managed to to work well. Even if uh, the surface is noisy, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you fit, uh, for example, if you fit uh, a plane out of this point, then you can filter filter out the points. So then you can say, okay, this is not part of the of the hypothetic wall. This could be part of the hypothetic wall. But yes, it's it's. I think it's fine so far. Mm. But okay, this is just the, the fancy part. And what is it? Yeah. So uh, this is what I uh, end up with. So at least I can display and uh, operate on individual segments. But uh, yes, what happens is. Uh, if I consider the, that I'm going to model the building, uh, my main elements are these three, which are the horizontal segments, which I will consider as roofs, and climb the segments, which also will become the, the roofs in this case, and the verticals, which are walls. And from that, I'm trying to, to say that I can get a, a building, because at this stage, it's there are only segments. So uh, even before doing anything else, I, I try to compute some attributes. Uh, 
uh, segment base and well the, the once we have two segments well we have to we can compute some other uh, attributes but of course uh, i also find that uh, well i'm working with voxels if i for example i have a a segment which have a high voxel count but a low density uh, low point density but somehow it's a a really dispersed element which may be may mean some errors so well, for example if i have a low voxel count for a single segment but uh well sorry this is point and high point density that means that this a uh, small element so those are the kind of uh, well some descriptor they work as descriptors to say that something may be an error something may be a small element and for example i i am also uh, willing to compute in the case of uh, vertical elements uh, the horizontal or vertical size because uh, it's possible in, the, in that case uh, for the vertical size because this a uh, vertical segment you know you have at least an orientation that means you have a normal and the vertical is around the well towards the set axis so then you can compute this horizontal and vertical uh, and of course, I well, you can also compute the segment if some segment is above or below some other segment, either if they're touching themselves or not touching. And this is simplified by the voxel computations. But uh, well, so there are many variations for this for this uh, mm. operation. But now uh, let me ask another question. Now, when yes. you have segmented everything, can actually classified in uh, all these three classes. Yep. Now you voxelize. Yep. And um, when you voxelize, uh, you keep the segments, you keep the, um, let's say, the semantics from the segments within the voxel, right? So if you have a horizontal uh, points, they go as a horizontal voxel. The voxel yeah. is also labeled as a horizontal. Uh, well, maybe it's a trick I'm using here. I'm not uh, explicitly creating a voxel, I mean, a complete voxel model. I mean, mm -hmm. once I operate, for example, let, let's take out two segments. Uh, if I uh, take two segments, I, for example, I compute uh, a bounding box uh, enclosing both elements, mm -hmm. and this bounding box become the the limits of uh, of my um, how do you say relative uh, voxel world world. So from that relative voxel world, which is aligned to certain number, then I say okay. If, for example, if they're touch. Uh, I compute if they're touching within that relative world, but the properties, the attributes are still on the on the table of the segments. So, I mean, I use voxel mm -hmm. operations to compute certain relations, but I'm not fully wo working on voxel models. So, uh, I okay, use so you, you don't voxelize the entire space, but you yes. voxelize only the segment. Yeah, only the segment or the set of segments which I'm operating on. So, mm -hmm. and then do you get mixed voxels? Because when you create the minimum bounding box, you might get some uh, pieces of segments from uh, neighboring segments, or you just don't consider them. Mm. You, you consider on the, only the segment that you are interested from. Oh. No, I mean, I only consider the segment I imp I'm interested on. So, I mean, uh, if, okay. I, if I use those seg two segments, these two segments have their own attributes. So sometimes in the in the relative voxel, I, I encode if this is something like uh, horizontal or vertical, they, I use some coding to say oh, this is uh, there is some something between two different classes but th that's something just working on the while operating work computing but 
yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they can be okay. mixed. Yeah, but then so, uh, when you voxelize uh, this vertical voxel, uh, vertical segment, um, how many voxels you get in X, Y, and Z? What is the thickness of the wall that you have, basically? How many voxels? Do you know? Voxels? One voxel uh, or uh, two voxels or three voxels, well, including that, that... The, the noise? Well, of course, that depends on the on the voxel size. I I started with some, I think it was uh, ten you, centimeters. At the beginning, you said you at the beginning there was a slide with five centimeters. Five centimeters, yes. I started with five centimeters, but now I'm I don't remember right now, but I, I think what was using ten centimeters. Mm, okay. So I mean, I'm just trying to speed up things, and I'm not trying to be so precise. So, so actually it is one, just one, um, let's say, layer with voxels. One, uh, come again, come again. Uh, uh, voxels, when you voxelize, um, uh, how many voxels next to each other you get? Is it one voxel in one direction and going uh, vertically or there several voxels next to each other and it's a thick kind of wall. Uh, good question. Um, you don't know. Anyhow, OK, go not, on. Not yet. Leave I it. don't know yet. OK. OK. But OK, uh, at this stage, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I already implemented some of these operations, like uh, this above, below. Uh, if something is above or below, uh, depending on the variation, but uh, of course, I I want to end up the implementation of these uh, operators. Of course, I need some metrics to to measure how close or far I am for some to some goal to some specific uh, point. And of course, uh, for all this set of uh, possible relations between these three segment types, I would like to extract a set of rules which are the most prevalent, the most common. So because I, I assume and I say that uh, this set of uh, surfaces have a functional relationship. So certain things should be above uh, other different type of segments. So that, that's the kind of things I want to extract. Mm. So I mean, just to mention this, the type, the kind of operators I'm, I, I went to end up with. Uh, of course, some are, some of those are unary. That could be the, for example, the size. In the case of, that I want to fit some plane, that applies to itself. If, for example, for, for these uh, occlusions, if I, for I don't know the reason, but I I want to do it, I may want to fill with some uh, regular sampling. Uh, I can fill the points. Uh, of course, if I if I want to compute the volume in terms of voxels, of course I. This applies to itself. Uh, some other types are these topological, which in this case are the, if something touches, uh, if something intersects, and what is the amount of intersection or the degree. Uh, the nice or the, the thing I really want to go uh, and may take a lot of work is this directional operators, which are the in this case the above. Uh, if something is above or below. Uh, for example, if uh, within the same plan uh, to the projection, or, or, or maybe this just uh, one of these segments is just above or higher than the other one, that's something different. Uh, but also the parallel, if two segments are parallel, um, you take the, the normal vector for this uh, for one, and then you walk along this normal vector, and then you compute the distance. If, if somehow these uh, normals are similar, then you can compute the distance. So you can say two segments are parallel. So, but okay, somehow these these are repeated. They cannot be strictly separated. But uh, of course, you need to operate with the segments. Sometimes you want to split in case there, you have this over uh, well, under segmentation, or if you have this over segmentation, you can also try to merge if you consider it necessary. So this is not that uh, difficult. You just uh, uh, 
remove the logical number and keep the points. And the last thing that I also consider quite important is uh, if you manage to, to establish a partial order, uh, well, it doesn't matter the relationship right now, but uh, if you, for all the segments, you define uh, a partial ordering, you can say uh, if two, for example, if two segments are one is larger than the other one, or if one segment is higher than the other one, or if one segment is wider than the other one, so or even more dense, or uh, so on. So that's something also we want to end up with, with some different uh, partial ordering uh, schemas. So for different set of segments, try to order them, and then you can traverse the point cloud based on this order and then try to compute or extract uh, certain things. And well, the last one is uh, a geometrical operator. If you want to find the intersection of two segments, well, you just compute it uh, in the voxel way and then you try to extract the things which are somehow intersected within, within that voxel. So that, that is possible. So, Again, the, well, the to do things that I have to do, of course, uh, I have to figure out how to extract this relationship set of rules. And uh, I also want to end up with this, uh, compute some metrics that that is, for example, I want to pursue the, the last one, this completeness. And what it means is uh, for the uh, given building, uh, what is the number of considered segments regarding the total number of segments that I have in the in the point plot. So this is something like this. This is the total point cloud. Of course, it's not uh, caught to this building. But if I consider all the segments which I assume that are part of the buildings of the building. What is the ratio between discarded segments and and uh, remaining segments. So, for example, I did I made this uh, by hand. I'm still missing a lot of things, but that gives me a rough idea of uh, how complete is this uh, set of points with respect to the total point cloud. So that will give me a number, and that number can say something about this. Uh, uh, the quality of this uh, extraction. So uh, this is the kind of metrics I, I would like to compute and, and pursue. So mm, that's solved for my presentation. I don't know if you have some other questions. No, actually I was wondering because most of the processing is on directly on the point cloud that you have at the moment. Yep. Oh, and at the end, you are doing some voxelization per segment. But why do you use the vox? What do you use the voxels for? Uh, I use it for computation because I mean, uh, all these segments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This these segments, by definition, they are all um, what is it? Mm, exclusive. I mean, uh, this set of points will never touch the other set of points. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go like uh, really try to compute intersection, you will never find intersection between these two classes, between these two segments. Mm -hmm. So for that point of view, you need to have some uh, generalization. And that generalization can be solved somehow with the voxels. Of course, you can try to extend, for example, uh, within this wall, you can say this is the the plane that fits the, the, the best. So you can try to extend these two planes and try to find the intersection. That's something else. I mean, it's possible. But uh, if you just stick and stay within this voxel, uh, you can also find uh, within this tolerance if there are touching, if they're connected, the degree of connectedness within this uh, representation. So mm. that's why, because yes, they they never touch. That by definition they never touch. Okay, 
But did you, uh, I cannot imagine, how are you going to intersect two segments which are voxelized in their own uh, reference scheme? Uh, what are you going to intersect? Yeah, voxels are just the points actually, but gridded points. How are you going to intersect them? If yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's something I, I need to finish. For example, these two, uh, this is an, uh, one example. I have this, uh, this wall, this blue one, which mm -hmm. up to this point, this is not part of the building. I mean, I know the building and this is not part of the building. This is another house. Mm -hmm. So the, the end uh, sort of face for this uh, building is this one. Mm -hmm. So if I uh, have this kind of field operator, which uh, I assume that field will flow within the, the plane. You can grow, 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 grow. Uh, I mean, for that you can, uh, actually you can go with um, what is called this kinetic data structures, which you can grow and grow and grow. I mean, both surfaces can grow uh, at the same time. And you find, now, now you find the intersection within the plane, and then you can say, uh, within for example within a certain voxel what are the set of points which are and um, uh, on the same voxels i mean maybe you have to go really uh, small voxels but the thing is to to for example to split this based on this intersection so yes i need to grow this surface and for that uh, okay, uh, then consider this as a, as a flat thing and just uh, split it. So that's so something. You want to find out which are the mixed voxels. So, for example, you have yes. two segments. You voxelize the two segments, and you try to figure out which are the voxels that contain uh, points from both segments. And you say, okay, these voxels are um, exactly at the intersection. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, like okay. this. I end up with this set of uh, boxes as well. Uh, just imagine, I have this uh, this sort of intersection. So, well, you have to decide if that intersection goes to this side or the other side. But yes, then you can split. But of course, you need to grow the region. Uh, you have at least the direction of the of the segment, and then you have with some. You have a way to operate with point clouds. Mm. But this um, growing or filling, that, that's quite difficult. How are you going to decide to when you stop with the growing? Uh, well, that's I, I, a very I, complicated issue. Yes, well, yes, if you, well, if you go here, for example, uh, um, uh, you're working within a plane. So within a plane, uh, for example, you can try to say to to grab it in this convex hole. So that convex hole, for example, this can be helpful in these kind of cases. And then for that, you can grow in this uh, outer direction, kind of alpha shape as well. Mm. Uh, I would like to pursue, well, that's why I asked the last time, uh, I understand that these kinetic data structures, I, some some French guy, uh, they integrated these into the Seagull um, framework. So I was willing to use that specific part of the of the Seagull and try to find out if I can grow these two surfaces or like maybe not this example, but uh, here like this, uh, you have two planes, which will intersect at some, maybe at some specific set of points. So yes, the nice thing is that both surfaces will grow in some kind of parallel uh, or concurrent uh, way, and they stop uh, whenever they uh, intersect. But that's something else, I mean, uh, Maybe it's hmm. out of the scope of the right right now of this presentation, but that, that's something I would like to to work mm -hmm. with. And why did you? Yeah, the, because the whole usually it's another way around. Usually you voxelize the point cloud to be able to uh, segment and classify things, right? 
Yeah. Because somehow you introduce yeah the structure and you can follow what is easily what is horizontal and what is vertical. But you are select um, how to say you are following completely different approach. You start <laughs> you process everything on the point cloud. You get the segments and even yeah in the segments after that you classify them. And just for the last step to be able to uh, intersect and to find the edges, you are going to voxels. Is it not going to be easier just to intersect the planes? The fitted mm. planes? Yeah, I mean, yes, it could be easier. Uh, but you will end up with, for example, if I try to say that this is a plane, I mean, I'm trying to align this. But by construction, but I mean by human construction, these surfaces are never flat. Mm -hmm. So if I consider that everything is absolutely flat, uh, I will end up with a lot of problems. So I would like to stay faithful as long as possible to the point cloud. So that's that's what I want to stick to. Because yes, you, yeah, you can fit a plane and you can try to yeah. write everything on yeah. a plane. Yeah. Yes, I will do something like this, but but that will introduce some additional errors. And mm. sometimes I consider it's not it's not the nice thing to do. But okay, that's a personal opposition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, exactly. For this kind of roofs, and um, especially you have a lot of kind of. Um, not flat roofs and also yeah. some walls might be not flat because of a lot of ornaments and yeah. of course if you try to fit a plane then you get a problem because uh, can i ask one question yeah Since as many you, as you like uh no it's just one uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, but why do you need the intersection if you don't have planes at the end well for example i have these this is a uh, this uh, pale blue green wall. I mean, I want to model a building. I want to split this wall. Okay. For because I know this is the end of the of the of the building, the logical building, the cadastral building. So okay. I would like to make this as automatic as possible. So just take this and extend it and cut it here. I can make it by hand, maybe, because working with points on this kind of surfaces is, is, it looks easy right now, but if you go to the actual point cloud, it's like, okay, uh, well, yes, I have this set of noise, I have this, uh, the, the, the ground, and, or maybe you have something like this, let me just show you. But do you want to create a 3D model out of it? 3D yeah. vector model. Vector model? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I would like to create a 3D vector model. Of course, for this, if you take this at the end, you can triangulate these things. And if you yeah, you want to create a mesh, kind of. A mesh, yes, because and if you why take do you need the... the... But I still don't understand why do you need the intersection. You will have parts and just to... Well, to do you what? need intersection. Uh, well, if you're, um, can you say, loose in terms of requirements you don't need to create the intersection you just go go and triangulate this but if you are wishing to create this kind of watertight models somehow mm -hmm. you need to close the the gaps but uh, I think still even if you don't have the intersection you can create the like watertight model on those parts maybe on some other parts you will have gaps but on, on something that is very close, you will not have gaps. Yes, but for example, well, uh, maybe I have something like this because I have a big uh, gap of points because this is occluded. So I'm missing some points here. So I maybe I want to just extend this uh, mm -hmm. virtual wall and go up, 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 and maybe try to make something uh, better. Just try to close this thing. Because otherwise, if you triangulate this, you will end up with some kind of uh, yeah. Well, I know. Weird surface. But why? Yeah, I think it's 
maybe uh, better to just fit few planes on all, all of those uh, classified points for each of them to fit few planes and you will have still a good match and you can prevent maybe some of those gaps of appearing. Uh, well, yes, I mean, it's possible. I mean, because uh, you will not detect all the, uh, like, if you have some kind of gaps, you cannot detect intersections with voxels. There won't be voxels there. No, of course, you, you will not uh, detect everything. Of course, if you have this missing set of points, you will not. But my goal is to, to have a rich set of uh, operators and operations. So this can be work. This point cloud can be workable. So because no, I tried, I tried so many times to at least, OK, you can get a nice point cloud out of, uh, of, a, of a drone, of a LiDAR, whatever. But if you want to do something with it, uh, it's it's kind of hard. I mean, getting this kind of segmentation maybe is something I would like to have uh, in the past, but this is 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 really difficult. So, for example, if I want to fix this wall, yes, I can just say, okay, take this and you know fill this thing here, and maybe like this, I have a hole just. Uh, Try to find intersection for whatever reason because I maybe I want to have these uh, coordinates at the ends and well, I mean I'm trying to enrich the the probability of a point cloud at least within this real. But yes, I would like to go also to vector world. Hmm. Okay. So I'm curious what is going to happen because there are quite a lot of issues. Uh, actually, you yeah. you're saying you are going to grow but in a way direction because you have to follow a plane you said yeah but if you have a if you have follow a plane it's it's not going to be the reality so again as if you have fitted the plane you know so then the same question, why don't you fit a plane, actually, <laughs> to <laughs> yes, be able to find the intersection and to cut the segments? Yeah, for example, maybe something that happens here is not visible at all. They have to switch to different tool like this, uh, for example. Oh, sorry, I have to make it bigger. Yes, like this. I mean, this is the, the kind of walls I am detecting. But as you can see, this is by far, this is not flat. This, I mean, this, mm -hmm. this shading depicts the, the, the actual windows and the holes or the recession. So, so I guess if you voxelize, because these are windows, and probably there is something like 20 centimeters inside the wall. So if you voxelize, five centimeters you are going to get something a wall with thickness of at least four and uh, four voxels yeah. and after that way you are missing something you have to grow all these four voxels up to be able to intersect with the um, bluish kind of uh, segment that is kind of shed or something at the bottom yeah. so whatever yeah so growing four voxels up it's going to be very random, I would say. <laughs> Don't you think so? Yes, uh, it also affects if you, well, because uh, if the voxels are axis aligned, yes, that will introduce a lot of noise too. But um, yeah, I mean, yes, it's not perfect, but maybe easier to use this kind of uh, techniques, for example, to discard the noise uh, rather, rather than this kind of segments. But, uh... mm -hmm. but anyhow, I find the segment segmentation quite good, but probably you have to reconsider again <laughs> what you want to do after that. Okay. As Mitko, yeah, actually, my opinion is the same. Fit few planes. 
and see what is going to happen. Probably the result is not that bad. Yeah, you know, something that I find out uh, why I have this uh, consideration, for example, this this uh, roof. Uh, I once I tried to fit a plane with some software for the romantic software, and I find out of the actual, um, how is this, uh, inclination that you know this this what these roofs have for the for the draining so mm -hmm. then i realize it's like four planes uh, in this case mm -hmm. so yep. then i say okay how i uh, i'm going to model this as a plane it's not really it's not correct so for that i say no it's it's, it's hard to work as planes but then of course you have to work with planes or at least some consideration, some threshold. But okay, you're right. I have to think a little, a little bit more. Yeah, but and probably something else you want to voxelize. But why don't you voxelize everything and just try to identify mixed voxels and see what happens? Whether these mixed voxels don't give you a good representation of the edges. Okay, I will check. I will check it. I mean, I was not voxelizing everything just because of the of the memory and I mean the language I'm using is not so nice with the memory consumption. Mm. So that's why I was not using it, and that's why I consider this uh, segment by segment uh, mm -hmm, temporal mm -hmm. voxel. That's that's the only reason. Yeah. Somebody has some other ideas about it? Mitko, you said. I, mean, uh, uh, I, I would probably go with uh, with planes uh, just to fill the gaps. Uh, and you can still preserve the points and create a mesh uh, or like triangles of, uh, from the points, but just to kind of see the intersections or fill the gaps. Just in this case, I, I would probably use the mm. planes. But Josepha, do you want to have the mesh at the end? Yeah, like you don't want to make the surfaces somehow flatter and keep them as polygons. You want to have the mesh. Uh, I mean, personally, yes, I would like to have this mesh. Okay, so yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, for example, some something that happens a lot is uh, this. Well, where is it? Yes, this is a crystal wall. I have it here, well, and in these cases, whenever you have these crystal walls, you know that the noise is really, really, really high. So yeah. sometimes you end up with the points within the within the structure, and that's something really nasty. Yeah, like maybe it's visible here. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's not perfect. So yeah, sometimes somehow I also would like to have these operations like okay you have this plane and maybe try to refit or make uh, points closer to the plane so yes i mean it's just it's just for uh, editing this having a way of editing the set of points so for third you can have these mesh models maybe a little bit better less <laughs> noisy less less random but yes, yes. I don't know. Some other questions. Yeah. Some other questions yeah, or ideas? Uh, Harshit here. I have one question. Sure. Yeah, actually, your segmentation looks very good, actually. So did you use uh, just on the basis of normals or do you have anything else to, you know, um, improve the segmentation results or something like that or did you clean one more question just with the that thing that uh, after sub sampling have you cleaned your point cloud or this is the raw point cloud which you're using here for your segmentation well the only thing i have done to the point cloud is uh, because it's, it was really really dense i i take this uh, poisson sampling at that resolution that's five centimeters that's okay. the only thing I did because uh, these kind of roofs are made of uh, how is what is this tiles? This kind of uh, roundish tiles, mm -hmm. but of course that that sampling, uh, of course, 
takes a little bit to get rid of this problem, but okay, I'm not considering this okay. as a huge issue. But something that happens, which I'm not mentioning here explicitly, but this is here. Wait a second. Uh, I think, yes, this is the last. No, just hold on a second. Uh, one, uh, yes, this is this one. Uh, this is the output of the, of the PDL um, uh, processing uh, software. Mm -hmm. And just let me make this bigger. Yes, this is PDL. So okay. this is uh, shaded by the normals. So this is nice, this roof. The other roofs are nice, but mm -hmm. the verticals are horrible. But that means yes. what, what happens is that the normals uh, within that uh, set of uh, uh, parameters, mm -hmm. they they cannot detect uh, nicely the the normals. Yeah, what because happens of is the that surface, they, maybe. yeah, because, because the, the surface, surface is uh, noisy, is not uh, nicely photographed, and mm -hmm. this one is a, an issue that I never noticed until really really late. So uh, the only thing I did was to recompute the normals. Uh, okay. And that, that I did it in uh, with the, with cloud compare here. Okay. So that's the only thing I did, and from that I end up with this kind of uh, this okay. kind of results. So yeah. I recompute the normals. I take uh, I, I I don't have the parameters here, but then I end up with this kind of issues, which I, for example, within this software I cannot just simply select this and flip. Hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. why. Working with these individual segments is nice because in, in, in the case, if I could just say, okay, this uh, set of uh, points within this set of uh, numbers, flip the normals, that's something yeah. I cannot do here. Yeah, cloud so, compare is not actually. So that's the only thing that. I did to, to recompute the normals because otherwise I cannot uh, split these two, these two walls. Maybe it's oh. visible here, yeah, like this. This, uh, those, those were walls, and they were connected. I have to split them. I can I split them by the orientation, and for that I have this. Uh, well, I can put the histogram of the, for example, for this segment, I can put the histogram. So then you can take the main angle, main main orientation. So if this belong to this orientation, then you. Take it okay. as a segment. If this is another orientation, just uh, take it as a segment. And um, actually, everything was computed in the database, so that's something. Okay. Really, okay. Something Great. I like. To... Nice, nice presentation. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you. Something else. Hi, I'm Jack here. Excellent presentation. Thanks, Joseph. Um, uh, just, just um, what's the um, the um, pros and cons of having the PostgreSQL in the background rather than doing this from a file? Pros and cons. Uh, the pros, let's start with the nice things. The pros is that uh, you can always add additional attributes to each, in this case, to a point, or in case that you uh, mix or merge all the segments, you can have additional attributes uh, at the segment level. So uh, that's nice. It's nice because you also have a special uh, uh, indices, special data structures that uh, I think was uh, R3, if I'm not uh, wrong. Um, you have a lot of operators, you know, distance within 3D distance, uh, within certain, uh, what is it? Well, basically distance. Uh, oh yes, I can use also the angle functions that are within the, the database. So I also use those for computing the segmentation. So right, in, right. I also make these histograms, but I, it's a mix between um, uh, JavaScript and between um, PostgreSQL. Mm -hmm. But yes, you can use a lot of built-in functions, 3D functions. Yeah. The cons. Uh, if you don't plan it nicely, I mean, uh, if you're still working with at the point level, if you want to compute uh, this cross product between a point and the rest of the points, yes, you have the special indices, but uh, it's, 
the input output cost is really high. So one SQL query takes more time just for the input output rather than for the rather than the computation. So that's the yeah. con. But if you make it uh, cleverly, yes, it's it's really fast. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Some other questions, guys. No questions. Okay, well, the, some other pro thing is that this visualization that you're having here, actually these segments are taken out of the database. So if I perform some query, if I do something else to modify this, in the database, this will reflect here. So that's mm -hmm. something nice to work with. So. And uh, I have one question. Uh, how did you store uh, in Postgres, like uh, using points or like using this uh, PG Point Cloud library? Well, uh, at the beginning, I started working with the PG Point Cloud. Yeah. Uh, actually, the initial uh, segmentation the classification is perform in, in PG Point Cloud. So it's OK, it's nice. Uh, sometimes it's cumbersome. Later on, I work a lot in uh, at point level because I have to take out and take in a lot of data. But for example, once I have these segments, uh, it's clever uh, to store them as uh, within PG Point Cloud. So, you know, everything is, uh, this belongs to us, the same class. So if you want to store this as a single thing, yes, you can make it easier to retrieve it. Otherwise, this is like a uh, hundred uh, thousand points or so. So, I mean, it's a mix between PG Point Cloud and raw points. Well, I use geometry type also. But yes. But raw, raw points, you mean um, single point or multi-point? In some cases, single point. I mean, I, I haven't aggregated anything yet. Yeah. Mostly because some operations don't like to work with the aggregation types. Yeah. No, That's is, something I, Yeah. Based on my experience, it's not very good to have them as uh, uh, a cluster because uh, of indexing. Because when you work with a cluster points, the index uh, uh, is just a boundary box of the whole cluster and it's not improving uh, the, the performance. But if you work like with one single object, then you have many like uh, uh, bounding boxes and this is improving the performance significantly. For example, if I want to say uh, what is the relationship of this green roof with, uh, with respect to the other things, if I start it within uh, PG Point Cloud, I First, operate first with bounding boxes. So all the bounding boxes which are within this uh, area, I will work with them, and then just skip the rest of the points or the rest of the segments. Then yeah. later you work at point level. So, so yes, uh, at this point it's better to work with segments. Yeah, if you, if you yeah. This is good. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So I hope you like this uh, presentation, this model. Yeah, the segments are very nice. Yeah, yeah. They're very good. Thanks. Really, the segmentation is more or less perfect. <laughs> you hardly can extract something like this from a point cloud with so many segments, you know. And yeah. they still stay one segment, although they are not really in one plane. Yeah, it's more kind of human, I don't know, human-like uh, interpret, interpreted or interpretation. Right. Okay, well. so if there is no other questions, probably we can round everything okay. off. Jack, uh, uh, you probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jack, you probably can say about the other images. Oh, images, sorry. <laughs> uh, presentations, the upcoming presentations. 
Oh, for the um, the next um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, let me just find the um, calendar. Um, so in the next meeting, which is in two weeks, um, we have a presentation from. Um, where is it? Here we go. We have a five pm um, presentation, so five till six Eastern Standard Time. And um, Chang Xin um, is, um, uh, Cynthia is going to, uh, hang, on, whoa, hang on, sorry, my email's gone off slow. Nan Lee, so apologies, sorry, don't worry, Cynthia, that wasn't you. Uh, Nan Lee will present her research on the classification of point clouds in urban areas based on machine learning. And um, then the following meeting that on the 28th of July, Taskin will present his research on point beam structures and the current status of automation. So um, that'll be at 4 p.m. on the 28th of July. So the next meeting on the 14th of July, 5 p.m. Mm, yeah. 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 And yeah. Um, you should all have um, invites for that. If, um, um, if, if anyone's missing, please just let me know and I can add them to the invite list. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I think this has been they, a very they, good group. And I think the next presentations see. are actually from, from uh, Technical University Vienna. Oh, yes, of course. That's an important yeah. <laughs> important point. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a good international group here and um, um, I think it's going to be some very good presentations coming up and a good good cohort of research here, as we've seen today in the presentation. Um, so yeah. thank you uh, once again, Joseph Hatt, and thanks everyone for joining us. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay. Oh, well, well, thanks everyone. That's thanks. It. If there is no questions, last call. Questions? Yeah. <laughs> no questions. Opinions? No opinions. Okay. Oh, oh well. Maybe we'll have. Just some fast more. can go to sleep. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Josephat. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Bye.